The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. And we have a um, interesting show today, as always. And I'd like to start out with a chart of uh, Netflix that we're going to put into the uh, den to let you folks look at because uh, it's a picture of a chart of uh, that just has absolute perfect geometry to it. Uh, you can see the ABCD pattern, and you'll notice the comment there about Icon being a possible technical trader. So what's really what's interesting is is the fact that. Uh, uh, I actually know Carl Icahn. Uh, one of my good friends and students, uh, Rick Pulcrano, out of Huntington, West Virginia, his father was uh, uh, Carl Icahn's right-hand man. He was his first vice president during the time they were in the TWA. And um, Frank made all of his money uh, 30 years ago, retired as a really young man in his 50s, and he bought a yacht and a beautiful home down in San Marco Island, Florida. And that's where he does to this day. And one day, about 10 years ago, I was down there visiting Rick and his father and mother. And guess who was sitting there having coffee? None other than the man himself. So it was uh, really interesting. He's a really nice fellow. Got a great sense of humor. And uh, so I did happen to know him. But the, whether he is, uses pattern recognition or not, I don't know. I know he uses a hell of a lot of common sense because he's a really smart dude and has been uh, extremely uh, successful. He had came into the um, Drexel offices uh, several times during the 70s, but uh, the, he was in the uh, junk bond area, so I never got to see him. That was on the second, third, and fourth floors in the Milken building, so I didn't see him. Uh, we had a down day slightly in the market. Uh, we stopped at support once more, once more, and I guess the Greek uh, news is now they're going to give them five more months to pay. Boy, what a deal. I bet you those creditors never watched one episode of the Sopranos because the one thing you don't want to do is to give your your uh, people that owe you money more time because they're not going to pay you now they're not going to pay you in five months and when you do that you're showing weakness and when you show weakness in the water and the, the blood is there you got to be careful because um, that's the problem I don't know whether this Greek thing is going to manifest itself or not but they're talking about 1.5 billion dollars that they owe the IMF come on you know, a Buffett could pay for that out of pocket change, as could George Soros. Give me a break. That's not a lot of money. Don't they know about quantitative easing? I, I, this is, seems to be like a see what's happening over here, see what's happening over here, so you can't see what's happening in your right hand. And that's the, that's the real problem. Uh, we're having a big sell-off again in Treasury bonds. They are down almost a couple points already, uh, ready to break, uh, you know, really major support down there at that 147 level. Uh, below that is 141. You know, that tells you that interest rates are going higher. It doesn't make any difference what the Fed decides to do. The market is already telling them that that is, in fact, what is indeed happening. So uh, that's what it looks like uh, from my point of view. We... Uh, we don't think that uh, we, that's me, <laughs> um, whether, whether we break down from here in stocks or not, I'm not sure. We've held, you know, relatively well in the S&P overnight. Uh, the NASDAQ and also the Dow have held up relatively well. They're pretty much unchanged. Uh, NASDAQ is down a touch. The s and P's up a bit. Dow's about un uh, up a little bit also. So there's very little going on. Uh, to me, the key is the fact that there's just absolutely no fear in the market. I mean, I and you stop about think about fear. Look what happened to Japan. Um, China last night was down 7.4 percent. Uh, that would be equivalent to about a thousand points uh, in the Dow, and that would put in the fear mechanism uh, into full play. Uh, would be my guess. Now we've got a lot of things happening in the commodity market, folks. I want to f uh, focus with the one thing that I a uh, long-term weekly chart of the ETF for the uh, commodities, uh, DBA, that's your agricultural DBA. As you can see, we have that, that ABCD pattern uh, structure that is forming there on the long-term weekly. And I think that is an incredibly important uh, thing to look at. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about this uh, in the soybean market. And uh, I'll put that up because soybeans are flying today. Uh, the weather is getting worse. 
and uh, we are looking at some potential really uh, serious thing. Well, they're already serious, but you know, the beans have rallied almost a dollar a bushel. In fact, they have rallied a dollar a bushel uh, in just a matter of here a few weeks. So this is something that we want to uh, focus here this morning and just show you where we are, uh, where we've come, and probably where we're going here because we have a lot of a lot of things to tell us that you know beans are going to get at least up here to the 10 1006 level because they blasted through the 61% uh, retracement this morning. They blasted through the 786 retracement. Uh, so everything is telling us that we are headed higher. That doesn't mean they're going to stop at $10. That just means they're probably the first stop because they've been up uh, 10 days in a row now. Uh, we are definitely in a weather market. There's no you know, ifs, ands, or buts about that, and you can tell that by just by looking at the weather reports and just by looking at the charts. But the thing is, you'll notice when you're down at the low there, uh, nobody was looking at them, but the pattern was telling you that the time and price should have been the, what you were looking at. And that's what we're looking at in the DBA now. So we want to watch that, you know, as potential for something, you know, really big happening. Now, I wanted to go through here. Uh, each one of these, the wheat, corn, and beans. And the next one we're going to do, of course, is uh, going to be the uh, December corn. Because <coughs> we owe uh, a good deal of gratitude to our good friend Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management to alerting to some of this stuff that's happening now with El Nino. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I got a remin remin remnants of a small um, summer cold. And I'm trying to get over it. Okay, here we're going to put the corn up, and you'll see that um, we exploded out of here uh, this week. We're up um, uh, 40 cents a bushel in corn. That's equivalent to uh, $2,000. Uh, that's just about double what the margin is on it. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a cluster of numbers coming in, a nickel higher in the corn up around the uh, 410, 408 level. But you, you are in a weather market, folks, and weather markets... Uh, can be difficult to play because if the weather gets really bad, these things can go blasting through here uh, through prices like you can't believe. So if you have the courage and this is what you'd like to do to try a short, make sure you use a stop because uh, weather markets, uh, you know, they, they have a giant unknown because, you know, weather can get really squirrely. And if it affects the crops, we do not have, you know, huge stockpiles. We have stockpiles, of course, but we don't have the huge stockpiles that are necessary to, you know, to feed. And that's uh, that can really be a, a giant problem for anybody that's, uh, you know, looking at some of these things. You, you just have to be extremely, extremely careful uh, of what we're watching. Now, the last one we want to look on the grain market here is the wheat market and it also has had a uh, tremendous move here in fact i just almost one of my beepers just went off just a few minutes ago right before the grains uh, you know closed before the morning open and uh, we're almost at the um um 50 percent level of the whole move down from uh, from january i mean we just did that in just a matter of a few weeks i mean that's been our our target all along here uh, in the wheat was uh, up here around the 556 level, and we're already 10 cents above that, where we have the final target, which is the 1.618 expansion at the 573 level. And that's up a dollar ten a bushel since May the 4th. And if you'll notice that, if you look at this chart, you can see the ABCD structure that's there uh, very nicely. If you'll notice the three bottoms, the one on May, that's drive one. Drive three is the one in June. And then drive five is the one that we had here in the middle of June. And then we had uh, the run up, uh, you know, to, the, to where we are now. Fortunately, uh, we've been uh, favoring the long side of this all along. So it's been relatively good to us. So we're going to be watching this real closely because if we get much above the 580 level, uh, we could be looking at something, you know, really, uh, really big in wheat. Um, uh, far far bigger than than what we uh, what we usually look at now if we take a look at this just to show you what you know where this wheat has come from let's just take a look at it on the weekly basis and you can see that uh, uh oh there we go you can see that wheat did have a high of 950 we went from 950 down to 450 we dropped twenty thousand dollars a bushel four dollars and so we could easily rally up to 725 and just be making a 50% retracement of the whole move down. So this is what happens. If you'll notice in 2012 on this weekly chart that I just posted, you'll notice this vertical rise during the month of June. It went straight up. It went from uh, $6 a bushel 
to nine dollars a bushel. That was a fifteen thousand dollar move in five weeks. Another one in every. It was up almost every day uh, during the month of uh, July. Uh, well, end of June, early July, it rallied fifteen thousand dollars a bushel. So you can't get involved in this on the short side without using some price protection. I mean, you've got to do that because weather markets. Um, you know, they can be wonderful to you, but if you're on the wrong side of them, you know, they can be the death of you. And you don't, you don't want to do that. It's, it's really not necessary to expose yourself to that type of risk when you can easily protect yourself. Remember the old, the old adage is that, you know, men are often wrong. Markets are seldom wrong. And that's the, that's the key to, you know, really what you're, what you're looking at on some of these things. So please, please, if you do decide to do something uh, make sure you do use a stop in these markets because they can be uh, so very, very, uh, very, very treacherous. You just don't want to uh, be involved with them uh, on the short side without using some type of protection. Now, we've been talking about the crude oil over the past few days, about the fact that it was looking, you know, uh, rather bearish. And, uh, you know, we are selling off quite a bit now. Uh, in the crude, and uh, also the gasoline is selling off. So uh, we believe that you've made a pretty good top here up around that 6,100 in the crude oil, uh, also in heating oil, and also in gasoline. All of them have been had lower highs that we focused on before, and now we're starting to uh, to see them uh, roll over. There should be some pretty good support around 57.5 to 56.5 uh, in the crude oil. And uh, that would be, be watching August crude now because uh, July is coming into delivery here in a few weeks. You don't want to have any uh, problems with delivery. So, And there's so many options to trade or contracts. You can trade July, August, September, October. You know, they're all, uh, they're all there because it's so huge that any of them are, are really liquid. So it's not a problem with liquidity. Uh, with the crude oil. That's not the, the same thing in some things, but with the oil market, they have options or uh, contracts in every considerable month. Gold, you can't do that because September gold has virtually, you know, no volume or anything in it. They go from August to October. In October, they go into December. They don't trade in November contracts. So those are things that you got to know if you're trading the commodities because those are the ones that will, you know, give you the best liquidity of what you're looking for. Um, I wanted to quote here a little bit about our my old buddy Harry Micus, who was on the uh, uh, CME floor for many years. He always had some good things to say, and he always used to pass out these little business cards that had some real interesting things on them, and I saved them through the years. And, uh, you know, this is the main thing. When he said about reversing your position, how hard it was, being able to reverse your position while you're day trading is just nearly impossible. But it's essential for, you know, success because once a trend starts, either short term or long term, it can go a long way. So if you can practice learning how to reverse yourself when you're wrong, you'll be a far better trader than if you're just thinking of one side of the market. Um, it's a, you know, reversing your position on the fly is usually something wrong to do. So you've got to prepare yourself, you know, to be able to actually do it. So we're going to pay a few bills here for Mr. O'Brien, and then we'll be back and we're going to talk about the Treasury bonds. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. 
Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I'm going to uh, put a uh, chart of the uh, Treasury bonds, a four hour chart going over the past six weeks. Uh, and as you can see, if you take a look at this, we've got a very nice three drive to a bottom pattern forming. Uh, coming in around the 144 level. Uh, that's down another four points from where we are. Uh, we're already below the low we made uh, earlier in the week, which is a real negative sign because the rally that we had off of that only lasted one day and it stopped at a 382 retracement of the high from June 19th. That's another really, really bad sign that, you know, these interest rates are going higher. I mean, I don't know why the Fed is dragging their feet, but uh, the rest of the world is certainly telling them that the market wants them to, uh, you know, take a look at this. Now, we also need to take a look at the Treasury notes because that's the larger uh, of the uh, contracts. Uh, it's uh, very, very uh, just incredibly liquid. And as you can see, when we uh, pulled those up here, we're getting ready to uh, break down below really strong support uh, at the 786 level. Uh, either we're going to make a double bottom here, which I don't think we will do, but you can see we're in a really strong uh, downtrend. Uh, and if we get below uh, 124 and a half, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, something you know, pretty, uh, pretty uh, sinister uh, from interest rates. Uh, something's wicked out there, folks. I, I, I just feel it. I mean, there's just no, uh, there's no fear in the stock market at all. Absolutely, 
uh, nothing. There is nobody in that market. I mean, you hear a few people, you know, uh, nobody's like me, but um, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> but uh, you, there's nobody out there that really is, uh, you know, paying any attention to some of these danger signs that we're seeing. And one of the danger signs is this is this low volume. I mean, how are these people going to get out if the stock market does roll over and we do have a sell-off? It's going to be pretty nasty, I would think. Um, if we take a look here uh, at the VIX index, which we've had over the last few days, uh, we made that uh, uh, ABCD pattern at a, at a just at almost exact double bottom. We've had a little bit of a rally here uh, in the volatility index, but you know nothing to really uh, you know really to hang your hat on. There's nothing really exciting there. Uh, if we look at junk bonds, you know they they are doing the same thing. They haven't really done anything uh, really spectacular. They've sold off, and but they've not sold off with any uh, type of uh, uh, gusto to the downside. Let me get this junk bond up to let you take a look at that. Okay, and uh, here we go. Every time I hear the word junk bonds, I laugh because I worked at the junk bond factory for so many years. And Okay, we'll take a look at the junk bonds here, and uh, you'll see that they're holding up relatively well. In fact, they just completed a little Gartley here about five days ago and had a you know a little bit of a minor rally. But here again, we haven't seen anything like we had during November when the market, you know, really uh, really dropped. But uh, the problems in the credit markets, it's not in the stock market. The, the stock markets will be secondary to it. But uh, I believe your credit market is where the problem is. And maybe this is a uh, something that's happening in Greece is uh, more uh, sinister than than it could possibly be. You know that I don't know, but the amount of money that they seem to be wanting—1.5 billion. I mean, there's nothing for these guys. Hello, I mean, you know, this is. Uh, have them call Janet Yellen; she'll tell you how to do it. You just print more bills. I don't understand what the big problem is, uh, and I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. But I don't think anybody else does either. I don't follow the news very much, but it appears that uh, today they uh, made some type of an agreement that they were going to stall for five months. And like I mentioned before, I mean uh, <laughs> that that's not good when you let your when you let your uh, creditors know that uh, your your people that owe you money know that you're having uh, problems or that they, you know that they're having problems, then you. Be become their partner because they have no incentive to come and pay and um, that's I don't know what anybody else can do with Greece I mean what are they going to slap them on the wrist the banking controls I mean who knows uh, I, I don't know uh, we're going to find out I suppose but this is the weekend that's for us that means when we come in Monday you know either all hell is going to break loose either upside or downside but you know every time we've had some type of an agreement reach the stock market rallies a little bit only to give it all back in a matter of a few days uh, it appears to me that the uh, market, in, you know, we've looked at this uh, New York Stock Exchange Index uh, so many times uh, through the uh, last few days, but, you know, it, it has a very bearish Gartley pattern that is now completed. Uh, it's going to take a move of over 350 points to the upside in the Dow to uh, uh, to to, net, to negate this, but right now it looks like you know we're heading down uh, to have a minimum of a 10% correction in this, and I and it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if it was a whole lot more, you know, because we're in an area where um, there's just too much complacency out there, and uh, you know when it happens they're not going to let. I don't think that the problem is. That, and, well, let, let me get off my soapbox and we'll pay a few bills and we'll come back and I'll get back on my soapbox. 877-927-6648. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization.
allocation capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative Market Safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts you get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% percent capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. No annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and as the uh, grains opened up this morning, uh, you can see that we just went above the $10 level in uh, November beans. That's uh, $5 a dollar bushel uh, higher than the, you know, the ABCD pattern there at the bottom. You know, when these patterns work, they work pretty good. Um, you know, there's really not much up here uh, for resistance, so, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. Now, the wheat is almost uh, making that the number it's also up quite a bit it's got into the 570 range uh, in fact it's into the zone as a matter of fact uh, we'll see how this week uh, how it acts I mean I I, uh, I'm, I am out of my wheat um, just a little while ago and uh, I am uh, waiting to see what happens I certainly wouldn't want to short it here if I did uh, I would certainly put a stop in and, and the problem is with that is that over the weekend this could be, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very, very dangerous because of being the weather market. So I just wanted to show you the update of what wheat and beans and also corn. Corn's doing the same thing. It's up also uh, overnight uh, from when we close to where we are now. So that's an important thing to, uh, you know, important thing to uh, keep in mind. 
So that's uh, basically what I want. The grains we will cover extensively uh, on Monday's show because of the fact of where we are in, in the weather market situation and the other things that are uh, that are going on. Now, um, the next thing I wanted to cover here is the um, the Dow Jones is actually up a little bit, which is good, and uh, we'll see what's happening. I'm going to talk here a little bit about the Bradley model. I don't bring it up a whole lot because it's it's um, it's a difficult thing to interpret sometimes, uh, as is anything in astrology uh, or technical analysis. But the patterns, uh, I, I understand, or I think I understand them relatively well. But as you can see from this Bradley model, uh, we made some type of a top here, you know, back in um, uh, early June. And uh, what we're looking for now is a ABCD structure would take the Dow down to uh, 17,500. Uh, that's 400 points uh, from where we are. And we really haven't had a good ABCD correction since, uh, you know, January. We had a really nice one in January that finished uh, right near the uh, 1st of February. We had a beautiful ABCD. If you look at it there, that was right after that mercury uh, went retrograde and came down those nine days. We had the same type of situation that happened, uh, you know, on May 18th that uh, Norm Winsky uh, talked about. We came down into that, and now it looks like we're getting ready to have a, another ABCD to the downside. But, you know, with this Greek stuff going on, you know, all this could could change, uh, you know, in a heartbeat, uh, you know, without any trouble at all. But, you know, the Dow is still acting pretty good. This morning it's up about 50 points where the rest of the market – is uh, you know not doing uh, quite that well, but uh, you have to wait and see what's going to go uh, on with it. The Nasdaq is making new lows from uh, the other day, which uh, it has some. Uh, in fact, is we should show this Nasdaq because we're coming into some pretty pretty significant support on a short-term basis in the Nasdaq. Almost. Uh, oh, give me a second here. Uh, I've got to do it on the 240-minute chart. I believe is where I have it. Yeah, there we are. We're almost there right now. Uh, give me a second. To uh, draw it in, we're right at a 382 retracement now in the. Uh, boy, this is really unusual uh, with the with the Dow Jones uh, being up and the Nasdaq uh, being down. But we're right at a 382 retracement now in the Nasdaq. Uh, whether that's going to be uh, uh, a place for acceleration or it stops right here, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But we're spot on at the 382 level here with a big divergence. You know, we've got the. Um, the markets, uh, the S and P's, uh, you know, selling off a little bit, uh, still up on the day, and the Dow, uh, because of the overnight action, is uh, looks like it's still up about, uh, well, it's still up 60 points. So they're the Dow stocks that are in there, they're opening them higher. But whether it stays that way or not, we will have to uh, we'll have to wait and see what's uh, what's really going on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Give me a second here. Oh, the the, the chart for the. Um, Oh, NASDAQ did not. Uh, thank you for bringing that up to my attention. I hope it's in there now. You can see the NASDAQ is setting right at the 382 retracement um, as we speak uh, right now. So this is a, an interesting spot here. Uh, what's going on? The S&P is still, you know, meandering down a little bit, but still hasn't taken out the overnight lows. And the Dow is still uh, acting. It's the Dow stocks that are pushing it up. Whether it's going to be, um, if that stops, then the rest of it will fall. So we'll wait and see. Longer term, uh, it, you know, that, 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 that's a really bearish chart. And the fundamentals uh, I've been pointing out for quite some time have shown that they don't look, uh, they don't look very good at all. So we'll have to wait and see if, uh, if. Uh, Oh, that's going to uh, if that's going to happen. <laughs> our uh, our pet ecru just came by. He's uh, absolutely an incredible bird. Comes by for fresh shrimp every morning and then every evening, and the kids go out and feed him. And he's just an incredible. He looks like a giant crane with a neck about nine feet long. Well, it's not nine feet, maybe three feet long, but he's really he's a house pet. He literally will take the the shrimp out of the kids' hands without even you know touching their hands. He's a really a, really a neat little bird. And he comes twice today and uh, we've named him Guido after one of my great uncles um, okay um, one other thing that I wanted to mention about the stock market and that is the uh, action uh, in the New York Stock Exchange Index folks is as bearish as it can possibly be you made a perfect Gartley up there at the 786 you reversed where he had to You've had two really strong down days, and if we close, uh, you know, really badly today, I uh, don't know where we're going to close, but nobody else does either. But if we should close down 100 in the Dow, 
Uh, this thing's going to really get hurt on Monday. Uh, that's the way it looks. But, uh, you know, you want to be uh, really careful being long in here, and you want to be careful if you're short, either one. That's the main thing. But the internals of the market have been getting worse and worse and worse, and I think there's nothing that shows it any clearer than if we looked at the uh, advanced decline line. And uh, let me put that up here. Oh, tell me where I put it, Larry. I've just got too many things on here to look at to try to keep you guys in entertained. Hmm. Well, looks like I'm not going to be able to bring it up, but we'll see. Nope. Shucks, I knew I had it in here somewhere. Well, at least I thought it had it in here. I must have deleted it. Oh well, we'll do it. We'll do it on Monday. But you know, believe me, the the line for the uh, advanced decline line is just uh, you know really not very good at all. It's just a. Uh, a very bearish indication of uh, you know what's really happening, you know, with the uh, with the market moving. Um, someone asked a question about the um, um, uh, weather markets in grains. How long they last? Uh, you don't really know. You see, because it's a weather market, and weather can change. The best the weather the best the weather. Try it again. The best a weather person can do is three to five days in advance. If they can do it five days in advance, they're on national TV. If they can do it, uh, you know, one day in advance, they're working for the local station in Tucson, Arizona. So it's really difficult to be able to read this stuff. And believe me, they have tremendous amounts of um, information that are there for you. But uh, how you interpret it is the real key. Um, uh, my good friend Jay Cross, one of the market wizards, um, he owned Jimmy Stewart's ranch in Nevada. He he made so much money in beans during the 73-74 run, 72-73 uh, uh, run, that he bought Jimmy Stewart's ranch in northern Nevada. It's the largest single uh, ranch in Nevada, and it was in his estate till he passed away 10 year, uh, 20 years ago already. God, I can't believe it. He died on the day that O.J. did his chase in California back on, uh, I think it was June 17th or June 16th. But... Um, Jay owned this ranch, and uh, he bought Jimmy Stewart's ranch, which with the money that he had got from his um, soybean trades, and he owned uh, part of a brothel. That was all part of the ranch because it, it had a brothel on it, and so that came with the ranch. And so uh, not that he visited it very often, at least that's what I was told, um, and I took that with a grain of salt. But uh, he had some friends from Washington, and, and uh, Jay had a lot of friends in the CIA and stuff like that. And one of the guys there one night was really soused. It had way too much to drink. And Jay asked him, he said, does the CIA follow the commodity markets? And this guy said, are you kidding me? He says, we can read a warning uh, signature, uh, warning sign on a package of cigarettes from 25 miles up. You think we can't tell what a coffee plant is doing or a soybean plant is doing? He said, of course we do. And he said, we use those to fund clandestine operations. Now, he was drunk, and I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what was told to Jay, and Jay told it to me. So I don't know if it's the truth, but that's uh, that's how it is. That's all you know. So we'll, we'll, see what's, uh, we'll see what's up with that. But you have to think that some of that stuff, you know, you certainly have to... Uh, you have to realize that that's uh, you know pretty much what's going on. Okay, uh, that was the question about the weather market. You just don't know how long they're going to last, and they end abruptly. Usually, they'll there'll be a big gap down, and it'll be over. But you know, you you want to watch the open interest and stuff because if you get a big short covering rally like this, and the open interest is dropping, that's nothing more than a short covering rally. It's going to be short lived, and it's not going to mean you know very much at all. So you want to keep in mind that that could be the the case also for. Uh, you know what you're looking at. So we've rallied 10 points here in the NASDAQ coming off of that 382. Maybe this is going to be a bottom for a while. At least it is for the first hour or so. So we'll see, you know, what's going on from this level. The, the, the S&P did not make a new low overnight, uh, nor did the Dow Jones. So we do have some support coming into the market now. With the Dow uh, was down about 30 now, or up, up 30 now, it's up 54. So the Dow's the leader today. And then we will find out what is happening. So that 382 has held so far. Uh, it came in at 44.90. The low was 44.89. So that's pretty much spot on uh, in the uh, in the Nasdaq. And you want to watch, uh, you know, what the rally is uh, is going to bring because we've already rallied 13 points 
you know, if that's the early morning uh, meandering between back and forth stuff, so I don't think that's a, a big factor. It's how we close today, folks, because uh, we've had a, a up week and then we've rolled over. And we, if we close where we are here, we're going to have a down week after a higher high. That's a sign of our weekly reversal. And the charts certainly look lower. I mean, they, they certainly don't look higher. That's the way it you know, looks from the cheap seats here. But that's, uh, that's all basically, you know, what I'm watching. I hope this information is helpful to you because that's just, you know, I'm, I'm telling you the way I see it. I mean, I don't have a, a, a set program, but all I do is look at the patterns. I'm very good at reading patterns, and the patterns that I'm reading are telling me this market really wants to fall apart really big time. I wish I knew what I knew now back in 1974, but I wouldn't be here uh, if I knew what I, 1974, I'd be someplace else in my life. But I learned all the lessons the hard way, but I learned them the right way, I guess. But uh, we will we will find out if this is the case. Okay, we want to switch our, uh, our uh, uh, let's go, title over here to silver and gold because we got a, you know, we got a major bear market over here, folks. Uh, this silver market, you talk about a market that looks really bad. Uh, we got down to uh, 550, uh, 1550 last night. And uh, let me just uh, just give me a second here to put this up because I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to do it with uh, silver first, and then I'm going to go to the um, I want to go to the gold chart. Uh, but we've broken down through some really serious stuff. Uh, uh, to the downside here uh, in silver. We've taken out the lows of April that came in at 550. We got to 554 last night, and I think that's a sign that, you know, we are looking for some real serious uh, moves to the downside. Now, we do have a, we do have a larger uh, ABCD pattern coming in here. Let me just put this in so you can, you can see it because it's a significant one, and it could cause a pretty good rally, but it's just going to be, you know, silver into new low ground again. That's all it really is. It's going to take silver down to below or right at $15 is what it's going to do, which will wipe out uh, all of the gains of, the, you know, April and May and everything like that. But this market's bearish, folks. There's no other way you can look at it. You're just hard to be bullish silver uh, with these lower highs that we've had. Gold had a chance. It really had a chance, and it, it lost its chance. That's the, that's the bottom line. There's nothing else you can do or, or say. It, uh, it gave up the ghost, and that's uh, pretty much what you're looking at. You can't do anything more than that. And we're breaking down in gold here. Let me show you here. We're we're holding up a little bit better in gold, but it's it's uh, it's it's just basically gra grasping at straws, in my opinion. It looks like we have a uh, another you know breakdown, and and if you know, and we're breaking down in crude oil, we're breaking down in gasoline, we're breaking down in um, uh, heating oil, uh, we're breaking down in um, all the other stuff. Now having a, we're having a, a weather market in the grains, which is keeping up the you know the commodity prices and stuff. But if the grains didn't have a weather market, all of these things would be in the toilet and that's deflation and that's what the fed can't do they can't they can't get over this deflation thing and that's the problem i noticed that in in um, japan that they had a one-tenth of a percent inflation given the fact that <coughs> the, the japanese government is basically buying anything that's printed and uh, they're, they're in, that's their version of quantitative easing. And, and you know, this is, again, it's a big experiment, experiment. And what if this, what if all this stuff is just really cannon fodder, folks? What if that's all it really is? What, what, do you, what happens then? Who's going to take the other side of this stuff? This is not a, this is not a good situation. And it really isn't. You know, uh, you know, we've got crude oil down about $3 a barrel this week. And it looks like it's going to close near its low. I mean, it's, testing the lows right now i mean good rally later in the day but you know you've got to you got to be careful in here we live in interesting times that's a chinese curse that's basically what that is we're going to take a break here and we'll come back and you can um, wind her up for the week
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. Up next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to wind up the show here. Uh, we've got a weather market in uh, beans, wheat, and corn. Uh, we've hit some key price levels here in wheat. Uh, so far, spot on. Uh, beans got above $10, but, you know, there's no reason why they can't go to $11. So uh, this is a tough market to look at from the short side. So basically what you want to do is to stand aside if you're not in it. 
And if you're short, uh, you've got to be really careful. And if you're long, you got to be really careful. We'll, we'll revisit these, of course, on Monday, especially wheat because of this key level uh, that we're looking at here and wheat up at the 570 level. Just just a week ago, folks, it was trading at 470. We're making that 135 pattern on the bottom. We focused that on one of our first charts in here, Tiger TV today. Uh, I wasn't expecting a dollar a bushel. Happy to see it, but uh, I wasn't expecting it. And that doesn't mean it can't go $2 because we saw that in June of last year or 2012, we went $3 a bushel. So those are the things that, uh, you know, you're looking at when you're when you're watching some of these things unfold. We're at key support here in the NASDAQ uh, at today's low. That was a 382 retracement off the last low we made. Uh, the Dow is holding up uh, the market. Uh, s and is actually holding up, too. It's up on the day. So uh, there's a chance here we could get a reversal, do whatever that whatever those Dow stocks are that are making the market move. But that's frankly only a few stocks. That's not the real market. The real market is the New York Stock Exchange Index, and it is basically uh, unchanged on the day. So um, I don't know if you should pay attention to what happens in Greece as far as the news comes out. You can. You can't seem to believe whatever they say because they change it every hour on the hour. I'm sure they're making money on both sides of the market. But, uh, well, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming that that's what they're doing because that was, that's what markets are there for. Uh, the euro is very close to breaking some serious uh, support on the downside at 111. We got down to 111.50 again today. Uh, if we get above 111, you know, you're going to be looking at uh, 108. And then below 108, you're looking at space between 108 and par at, at, at 100 or 99, is which is our ultimate uh, goal on the euro is where we think it's going is to par uh, based on the, you know, the really longer term charts, you know, and uh, we'll see what really happens. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and do something nice for somebody that has a whole lot less than you today. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye-bye. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.